Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Alexandra Gliszczyńska Gravias, and uh, I confess I have borrowed or stolen the title of my speech from the great Tina Turner. So it's fighting racism, what's law got to do with it? Uh, so when we think of the history of the world and humankind, we come across phenomena that are so closely linked to human suffering and that are there with us since ages, since forever. So these are wars, war crimes, genocide, crimes against humanity, hunger, uh, cruel treatment of humans by humans, torture. And also racism becomes one of these phenomena. Racism and one of it, its particular forms, which is anti-Semitism, that is being called the longest hatred. And some 10 years ago, I decided uh, to combine my legal expertise, to combine my education um, and my passion for human rights and to start fighting against racism with the tools of law. I guess uh, any talk on uh, braving the impossible shouldn't start with a depressing or discouraging statement, but unfortunately, here it is. Racism, anti-Semitism, xenophobia will never be defeated or eliminated fully. The fight against them is more like Don Quixote's fight against windmills. So you can only try. But I would like to tell you today why I still believe this is the fight worth taking all efforts and commitment. For me, it all started when I first met Professor Alvin Rosenfeld, a world-class expert in Holocaust literature at one of the academic conferences. And uh, he said that when he looked at me and he listened to me, he saw a deep compassion for the Jews that perished during the Holocaust and a sense of co-responsibility for what had happened to them. And this was true. I have always felt this way. But it just struck me that someone else could also notice this. And some months later, I attended a lecture given by a Harvard professor, Ruth Wiese, and the lecture was entitled what are we going to do with anti-Semitism? No, seriously, what? And the way Professor Wiese spoke about fighting anti-Semitism, how passionate she was about it, uh, was so enlightening and inspiring for me in so many regards. And today I'm sure that both Professor Wiese and Professor Rosenfeld inspired me and gave me courage to turn the inner sorrow and pain that I truly felt um, into action against the evil that caused these feelings. And so I decided to combine this growing urge to do something about it, to do something about anti-Semitism, racism, with my legal background. Um, and since then, I have been trying to brave the impossible. But now comes the controversial part that everyone is waiting for. The law doesn't work. I mean, the law doesn't work the way it should when it comes to the phenomena that are so closely linked to human uh, feelings. Because you can force someone to stop stealing with the tools of law, but you are not able to stop someone from hating another person because of that person's color of the skin, religion, or national or ethnic origin. This is much more complicated and demanding. But we shouldn't give up. I truly believe in the social responsibility of law. And if we agree that the system of legal norms, and in particular this part of the system that belongs to the body of criminal law, has been established as a kind of demarcation line between this what is acceptable and this what is not acceptable and condemned in a given society or community, then I argue that racism should be punished and condemned on an equal footing as stealing, reckless driving, or, or fraud. What is more, I perceive racism as much more socially harmful than many other crimes that are traditionally being included in criminal codes. Second, I think that there must be limits to free speech. No genocide in the modern history of the world would have been possible without being preceded by hateful words. And of course, Nazi anti-Semitic propaganda is just a classic, well-known example here. But I also think about Rwanda, about genocide and war crimes that took place during Balkan War, where the hatred has been there, has been spread for years before the actual killing started. 
I also negate the concept of free marketplace of ideas, where all are free to express themselves freely, uh, even in the most hateful manner. And their ideas compete in a way, and the winning idea is the one that gains the largest support of the listeners. I simply don't believe that haters, in this case racists, and their victims are equals in this kind of competition. All research results clearly prove that those targeted by hateful speech, racist hateful speech, are more likely to stay quiet, to suffer in silence, just in order to avoid further attacks. They are vulnerable, they don't fight back. And this is crucially important to help them. So for me, racism, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, Islamophobia, homophobia, these are not ideas or views. They are all hatred, and I don't discuss with haters. Third, facing and fighting racism demands being a radical sometimes. As Elie Wiesel, a great writer and Holocaust survivor and the Peace Nobel Prize winner said, we must take sides. Neutrality helps the oppressor, never the victim. And you can't compromise here. So you are not on good terms with colleagues who claim that apartheid had its good sides too. And you don't perceive Holocaust denial as just another opinion of someone who claims that uh, the Jews invented the great lie of gas chambers. And you don't laugh at even slightly racist jokes. And you get out of a taxi, even if already very late for work, if a driver makes, taxi driver makes um, uh, a homophobic remark. And then immediately you call the taxi company to complain. It seems obvious and easy, but it's not. It's demanding, it's even stressful, because you need to be constantly aware and constantly ready and willing to fight back, to respond. But it's worth the effort, really it is. So maybe something positive now. So what are the benefits of fighting racism? I'm a lawyer, and in line with all unfair, exaggerated stereotypes uh, associated with this profession, I'm really interested in gaining as much as possible and winning the cases. So what do we gain by fighting racism? I will claim that we gain actually everything that really matters. Because first, we help the victims of human rights violations. Second, we prove that human solidarity really exists. And third, maybe most importantly, um, we protect ourselves and the societies we live in from the Camusian plague of hatred that poisons souls, hearts and minds. And by standing firm against racism, we also respond to the powerful call of never again that referred to the Holocaust but has never been fulfilled. And so we are saving the world. I know it sounds pretentious, uh, but I really believe it's true. So if I were to advise anyone on how to try, because it's just possible to try to brave the impossible in case of fighting racism, this is what I would list as the most important things. First, be aware, know the history and know current developments. So this way you will be able to fight racism not only because you feel it's right to do so, but also because you will know how devastating its consequences are, its social, moral, uh, legal consequences are. Second, be careful with those who claim I'm definitely not a racist, not a homophobe, not an anti-Semite, God forbid, but there is no place for commas here, just a full stop. I'm not a racist, full stop. Then, react, always react. To quote Elie Wiesel once again, indifference is the epitome of evil. And this is very simple. Just imagine for a second you are a target of hatred, just because the color of your skin, and there is absolutely no one to stand by your side to help you. This just demands human action. I think we all bear this moral obligation to act and help in such situations. And for me, this obligation just doubles or triples even for lawyers. Then, know the law and how and when to use it. We tend to think that legal actions, legal steps, are reserved for true or serious crimes only. But at least in the European system of human rights protections, there are laws against hate speech, racist hate speech, racist hate crimes. 
So in the situation that someone disseminates in public booklets with the theories of the hierarchy of racists or pictures ethnic minorities as subhumans, the law demands action. Then, be engaged. Know that there are hundreds of NGOs, wonderful NGOs, acting against racism. Try to help them, maybe just by signing their petitions. It really means a lot. It's crucial. And lastly, be compassionate. I more and more often come to the conclusion that what really matters is compassion. And if you will feel this way towards another person, towards the victim of human rights violations, then you will never be hesitating to act. Thank you very much.